Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here with us. This is the, the beginning of everything, and uh, many words have already been said, written, and um, we try to add some more information and some and uh, some consideration that we might consider, consider possibly useful for you. But let, let me say, for, first of all, let me thank all the uh, institutions that um, helped the Biennale, from the ministry to the region, the local authorities, uh, our sponsors, our donors, and in particular our partner, Swatch. The, may I uh, uh, my, my warmest thank goes to the, the curators of the previous Biennale who are here with us today. I am glad to tell them, to welcome them. And there is a, once somebody will write the history of the Biennales and will find all the red stripe that connect one to the other or the relationship between the one and the other, or the, the contrasts and the similarities, and that would be a, a wonderful and a wonderful exercise. Let me uh, welcome the curators of all the other sectors of the Biennale who are here with us. Now, I, I want to underline this one. You. Uh, Enter the Biennale, you enter an institution which is a manifold and, and is active in many different sectors. And hundreds of people are working in theater, dance, music, and the cinema sectors. And I always keep reminding this because I know very well that everybody talks about interdisciplinarity, but everybody sticks to his favorite discipline. And uh, so I have prepared some folders at the entrance that any of you might be interested in what we do beyond art and what will be our, what will be our program for the next weeks and for next months and what we do with the colleges for the young generations of artists. I mean, there you would find all the uh, possibly useful information for you. Um, one thank to the journalists who are here. I keep saying that um, my, the people of the Biennale knows among the yardstick of the success of the Biennale is the number of journalists who are attending it. We have overcome the number of 5,000 these days and 5,000 accredited and present is, uh, uh, I mean, one of the records in any case. I remember when I came here first time there were 2,000 altogether. So, thank you for being here. This is the, I say, a yardstick because uh, on the whole what we really want, we want to achieve is the, the trust of the world towards what we do and the presence of this uh, journalist is the, uh, it's a way to give us a measure of uh, the trust that the world, with, the, with which the world looks at our work and what we do in any in different fields. Um, these we are we are living the days of the Venissage, and uh, there are, uh, the Venissage is for us a very engaging exercise, but it lasts five days, uh, and, uh, but, and then there with the opening, and then the six months with which the Biennale will be in direct contact with our visitors and with the public. And this is, I just, just want to underline this to, and to, because the, our main aim, of course, is whatever we do, we look at, our, at the public as our main counterpart. I mean, we are working for improving and spreading knowledge for helping people to understand and to know, and as I usually say, to induce some desire for the arts, and desire for the arts, for architecture. Art is not something that you 
uh, want to know or want to be informed with without the desire of art and artists in your life and in our life. Um, thank you to the uh, representatives of the foreign of the participating countries' pavilions that we have accepted the idea of making the, uh, the to, to let the Biennale last six months, one month more than usually. And this is once again a demonstration that we, well, I mean, our aim is really to talk to the public, to extend to as, as many visitors as we can the result of the research that has been done by the curator. Uh, to help and to be helpful to the visitor, we have introduced last year a, 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 a new uh, organization for the attendance. I mean, the attendance that are all, all along the Biennale uh, are now young, graduated in art or correlated disciplines who have been informed, who have, been, have, been, have had workshop to know and understand and see and be, become somehow experts of the Biennale, so they will be uh, attendant, or active attendant, uh, capable of helping the visitor, not only in uh, where, where, where is the exit and where is the entrance, but also what's happening around them or, and the works that are around them. Uh, the very active is the ones, uh, the, the, our uh, people working in the educational sector activity I mean, will have 2,700 teachers which are already working for bringing their pupils. I mean, I'm talking about ordinary schools, and we expect more than 50,000 people from schools from the Veneto, Italy, or even Austria and surrounding countries for, to have a guided visit and the possibility to talk and to experiment and to work together around what they have been seeing and to talk together and to discuss what they have been seeing. Uh, we'll have 45 uh, universities taking part of our sessions, university section program, which means that they come with, the four, uh, with a in group of about 50 persons between the students and scholars, and they, uh, they have their own visit and then they spend some time for a common discussion and uh, this is something that started a few years ago and is having, uh, it's inducing more, more and more interest in every year. Uh, the, um, some restoration every year and that there are parts of the arsenal have been restored and the last one has been the one you will find at the, uh, in the uh, so-called Sale d'Armi uh, in, uh, in the fort for room, new rooms to be dedicated to, uh, to the college activities and to the exhibition for one of the tavole aperte that are part of the exhibition curated by, by uh, Christine uh, Marcel. Uh, and coming to her, I mean, the, uh, I want just to remind you that the curator for a Biennale is not just a skilled person capable of organizing an exhibition. It's someone who come here with all the knowledge and the research and the passions and the efforts that have been made throughout his or her life and uh, with generosity <laughs> throws it, everything in front of us and uh, so to be, to be curator of a Biennale is an act of, really an act of generosity towards the visitors because it's, um, I used to say that a, 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 cura a potential curator of the Biennale walks around with a, with a basket on her head with all the ideas that if offered the opportunity to uh, present them to the world, uh, comes with enthusiasm and do it here. So, I mean, uh, the, the, therefore, we, uh, I'm sticking, we are sticking to the idea that the Biennale has to be uh, one single exhibition for, with one curator. And this is, 
I'm, I, I'm really, I, I'm not a follower of the Biennales with commissions and committees or commissions of selection and all the rest because commissions, they start negotiating. I don't want a curator to negotiate with nobody else but himself and uh, come here and bring with all the, 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 the take this as an opportunity which might be unique in her life. And the, uh, uh, so it's, uh, and when we choose a curator, of course, we have knowledge of this big basket who each of, it, each of them uh, carry with them, and we find uh, the affinity between that content and those ideas he brings with him or with her, and what we want to be a Biennale each, every two years. And uh, this time, as you have already noticed, the, um, everybody starts talking about the dramatic situation of the time in which we live, and that's true. And we talked about the age of anxiety to, to in the previous Biennale. But then, uh, since the age of anxiety have turned to be an age of anger, uh, we thought that it was not a good thing to indulge in uh, letting Biennales represent the state of the world directly, but to make a sort of, to make a counterpoint to it. And to say, in the age of anger is an age in which everybody tends to reduce the depth of, of things to, to skins, to veils. To, it's uh, where uh, oversimplification dominates, uh, and, and it's called simplicity, but it's just self-deceptive simplification of whatever. And all the truths are sold and uh, thrown into one's, one, our faces as a uh, fragment of truth. And uh, of course, with the very serious peril that these are not uh, truth, but these are just lies. That in the age, the, this uh, sort of ten t temptation to oversimplify the life of human beings is, as a, as a counterpoint, a biennale that want to restore the, uh, the, 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 the basic concept that uh, our life is a, is a complex. Uh, is we, there are many of us in each of us uh, there is a complexity in the human conditions that has to be uh, known and always considered. And the world of art, as, as nobody else, is in the condition to help us restate this, uh, this, the, the, this, uh, this sort of this, the state of the human being and the fact that through art we, are, we can really renovate our uh, knowledge of us in uh, uh, going beyond the easy, simple truth of the day. The, so, the Biennale, uh, Christine has already explained and already shown and already has done uh, an incredible work for uh, a work where the artist is at the center, the, uh, the artist and uh, and when we say the artist is at the center, we come back and we say, we mirror it, we're saying the visitor is at the center because all what is here is uh, underlying the importance of the artist beyond the work of art, but underlying the fact that the visitors have, had, have to have the opportunity to go deeper into the work of artists, to know them better, to understand uh, this world, to get nearer to this world. It's has always been a theme of Viennale, a sort of reconciliation with the public at large and a contemporary art. And uh, this Viennale certainly is a major step towards all these aims that they have been pursuing in the past, but this time uh, uh, the, the purpose appears in, in a very sort of special uh, form. The, the artist has always been at the center of the attention, but now this, with this Biennale, the artist is there with his work to meet the visitor. 
Uh, as I said, this is a, uh, the description in a world of battles. This is the description of the silent battle that the world of art uh, carries on. The world of art is a world of courage. The world of art is a world of capability of resistance, capability of uh, uh, not indulging in uh, banalities, not indulging in our, in our uh, vices of the ordinary life. Is, uh, and it, as I said, it is a great help for the, our self-consciousness of the incredible complexity of the human being and the human condition. My, uh, therefore, I think, I mean, I'm very grateful for, to Marcel to have been, to have brought such a wonderful basket of uh, propositions and thinkings and, and thoughts and, and ideas and to have with such, such a great generosity uh, displayed it in front of us. Uh, I thank her. A warm air with her. I thank my, uh, Christine with her team, and of course I thank my thanks goes to the to the whole Biennale that has been working for us and will be working for six months to uh, help a, a, every single visitor to get the maximum that it can get out of the visit to this not simple, not short exhibition, but rich enough, I guess, to conclude that a visit to the Biennale might somehow change your perspective, your perspective of life, your perspective of what you think about art and about the human beings. Thank you very much. Buongiorno a tutti. Uh, I want to first thank uh, very deeply uh, Paolo Barata for uh, his trust and uh, all his team for uh, helping me to realize this uh, project. I want to thank my uh, amazing team, uh, Luis Galou, Laure Chauvelot and uh, Yasmin Osebi for all their amazing uh, involvement in this exhibition and all the persons that I can name uh, because they are so numerous who have uh, helped me in this, uh, the donors, the supports also for this show. But most of all, I want to thank all the artists who have participated to this exhibition because uh, we had uh, uh, with most of them uh, the time to, to share ideas, to work on the creation of their new works. And uh, I, I can also see that uh, for some of them, they, they could also realize their best work according to my uh, own knowledge of their of their art and uh, for me it's really uh, 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 the most important thing to put the artist uh, and the art at the center of the exhibition. Uh, art has been my passion for uh, uh, forever, if not an obsession, and I'm very happy to, uh, to share this passion with you and, and the public because I position myself as a curator in between the artist and the public. And, uh, for me, this binal is also addressed to uh, every kind of public who can encounter a work of an artist and understand it in, in the best possible context. Um, for me, it's very important also to put the, 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 the voice of the artist in the, in the center because I think uh, the artist has a, a responsibility and something to say to us, especially in a time that is uh, uh, threatened by uh, some regression, some populism, some uh, voices against the freedom of, uh, uh, that, that is carried by art. And uh, I think it's very important to, to protect it and even to uh, reaffirm uh, the, the freedom uh, of art. And uh, for me, it has been also a methodology to put the artist at the center, as you will see, because it's not only about having the, 
the, the works in the exhibition. It's also uh, about a lot of parallel projects that I have developed, like the Tavola Aperta uh, and others that I will uh, explain more in details uh, later on. So uh, the exhibition uh, is organized not uh, as a unique uh, thematic uh, journey, but uh, through a different um, sequences of pavilions, because I've tried to also uh, choose the right context for each artist to be the best understood, and also because I wanted this exhibition to be uh, an experience uh, both of uh, of thinking and perception with uh, a sort of uh, path or uh, journey through different universes. So you will begin the, this journey in the central pavilion in the Giardini with the thematic uh, of the, the self, so the self of the artist, the way the artist works, his universe, his studio, his influences, and then uh, step by step you will arrive uh, without noticing also because there is no big wall separating each uh, so-called pavilion. You will uh, arrive in the arsenale in the dimensions of the common and more and more it will open towards the outside because uh, one uh, response of the uh, uh, the closure on one, oneself is really to uh, to also ask questions about uh, dimensions that are ungrabable and also uh, address uh, some spiritual and more metaphysical issues uh, that are in the artworks but sometimes not enough uh, uh, showed. So you will have also uh, the possibility to um, to to see uh, parallel pavilions uh, about the the books and the practices of the artist. I will uh, explain it later. So let's enter in the show itself uh, by the beginning, which is the the pavilion of artists and books, like a prologue of the exhibition. And uh, you will find this work uh, at the very entrance. Uh, which is a work from a, a very important artist from uh, Zagreb, a uh, conceptual artist who at uh, the end of the 70s uh, realized this series of uh, photographs of him lying on his bed or even sleeping. And um, you will then uh, just next to him uh, see a, a little room devoted to Franz Vest, who has al already been showed here. So the idea is more to make a small uh, cabinet de curiosité and to insist about a, a very important point that I want to develop at the beginning of this show, which is uh, uh, to define what is an artist today and also uh, what is his daily life, or what nourishes him. And I think we have to rethink about this old, uh, ancient uh, dialectic, uh, very familiar to uh, the Italians, uh, which was a, a, a Roman um, uh, dialectic, the otium and the negotium. Uh, today, when you translate otium, uh, uh, it's uh, about leisure. When you translate uh, negotium, it's about business. But uh, in the ancient uh, under understanding of the terms, otium is this very moment in which you are with yourself uh, in a sort of laziness or non-activity, and you are able to develop something that can be uh, creative or intellectual. And uh, in uh, the ideal uh, planning of a Roman uh, man, uh, but that had the means to, to have the time for it. Uh, all afternoon were devoted to otium. And uh, for me, an artist is someone who also uh, take this time in his, in his day to not do something, because not doing something prepares for uh, the making of the art. This moment of uh, uh, the, the thinking is for me very uh, crucial and in this sense the artist shows that uh, maybe the free time is not uh, only about uh, uh, leisure or entertainment but also about nourishing oneself. So it's not only about 
creative people, but also about all of us. Uh, Francis Stark also, who is uh, there lying on her bed. Uh, she's uh, making a, a, a sort of statement about our, our own world and she's thinking on her couch, uh, surrounded by uh, famous artworks of our art history and also uh, reference to the low culture in the US as a whole to build her uh, practice. Uh, I also wanted to bring uh, this idea of the studio in this pavilion, uh, but not uh, to move studios from artists, uh, but to invite artists to make work if they, they were not existing before on the studio itself. So for example, Dawn Casper, you will meet her in flesh uh, in this pavilion because she moved after having problems to rent uh, a place, she decided to uh, to move in the museum and to live there. So she, she's really uh, like showing her daily life between uh, non-action, uh, otsum, and uh, also interacting with the public. And for me, the, the notion of negotium, which is uh, properly translated by a business, refers more to the ancient concept of uh, being uh, involved in uh, the life of the city, like the Res Publica. And I also show in this pavilion some artists who are deeply concerned by, uh, uh, I would say, in their civil life, deeply concerned by uh, having a role in the city, uh, like Olafur Eliasson, for example, uh, who is uh, in the central room of the, of the central pavilion, who is dealing uh, with the idea of educating people, of uh, sharing knowledge, and uh, also uh, helping migrants to integrate uh, in their life uh, here in uh, Italy. Uh, the studio is also ironically with the work of Hassan Sharif, who is a major artist from the Emirates, a supermarket, that's the title of this work that you see uh, on this picture, uh, that is made of all the, the works he has done. And so the, the piece itself is the storage that, uh, that he used uh, usually to put his work together. I, I want to show also the, the world of an artist, uh, uh, and sometimes this world is already present in the, in the work. For example, you will see one of the most important artists uh, for French New Realism, Raymond Hens, with his uh, famous uh, Airbus luggages that are full of books. And it will be a way for you to enter in his mind and to understand uh, his way of thinking. He was describing himself as a web artist uh, because uh, he was able uh, rewriting in all the books that he had read to, to make some links between all this knowledge and to incorporate it uh, into his work. Whereas Gen Jiani, who is a, a Chinese artist, emerged at the end of the 80s, uh, who described the book as his best companion, is really using the book uh, to, to make uh, more artistic uh, uh, pieces referring to the history of abstraction. The, the second chapter is still about the dimension of the self, but more on the emotional level. Uh, we have uh, heard so much uh, uh, things, read so much article about the feelings of, uh, of fears, of anxiety, or even anger, uh, that I think we cannot put this feeling uh, outside of the analysis and especially because artists in general they, they even use their own emotions to make the, the, the art or uh, wants to put them uh, as a subject of their, of their art. And uh, I was always surprised even as a student that this dimension was so much denied in the art discourse uh, as if the principle of reason that was uh, at the center of our uh, at, at least my occidental education uh, based on the enlightenment was the only principle we should refer to. But the, the reality of the world, the uh, existence of uh, violence and conflicts that this uh, principle have not helped to uh, erase show us that we have to also uh, never forget these dimensions. 
And uh, an artist like Marwan, for example, uh, with a room dedicated to him, I also wanted to have uh, not only one or two works for an art, for, from an artist, but really give them a space to, uh, to show their, their way of uh, making art. For example, Marwan is a painter who dedicated his uh, life to uh, self uh, portrait in a sort of dialogue with himself and with painting and with a very deep uh, emotional content uh, that you can see already in this Christian figure, as well as Firenze Lai, who is a young artist from Hong Kong, who is dealing with feeling of loneliness, of uh, wish to be close to someone, and at the same time, claustrophobia. And the, the end of this uh, pavilion is this uh, lonely man uh, floating in a cosmos, and it's a sort of uh, uh, interrogation point at the end of this chapter uh, that will uh, continue in the arsenal, yeah, as if the contemporary man, a sort of vulnerable, vulnerable and fragile self, would be suspended without find, finding ground. Um, in front of the Giardini, you will find this uh, open table, just on, uh, on the right uh, of the central pavilion. And uh, every Friday and Saturday, uh, we will have one of these lunch shared by the, an artist and the public, also in the Arsenale, in the new Salé d'Army. And the idea is to, um, to have a close uh, poss a possibility of being close to an artist, not only to the person who will be present, but also for the people who will be able to follow uh, these uh, talks uh, on the Biennale website with streaming and uh, also uh, in the archives. So this is the program that, uh, as you can see, is quite big and that also involves a lot of national pavilions because I wanted also to extend my parallel projects to the national pavilions, including them uh, in this program. So in blue, you have all the national pavilions who are participating. And they also participate to the Artist Practices Project which is a, a project about uh, the, the way an artist works. So since February, you have seen already uh, every day a little video on the website of the Biennale. And I'm happy that they were very well uh, looked at. And also I asked the National Pavilion to send their video. So in the uh, Central Pavilion and in the Salé d'Army, you will find all these films uh, to be looked at, uh, and also it's a way to bring all the pavilions together. Uh, unpacking my library is the last uh, parallel project. Uh, I've asked all the artists of the exhibition to send them, uh, the, to send me their, their list of favorite books. Uh, it's also published in the catalog, which is a bit an extension of this methodology, just focusing on the artists. And all these books you can find in the uh, Stirling Pavilion at the entrance of the Giardini. You can uh, take a little rest, uh, look at the book. Sometimes it's quite funny, like you have uh, uh, very serious books, but also uh, books dedicated to uh, uh, cooking or plants, for example, for my Michel Blasi. And then you will arrive at the Arsenale and enter in a new dimension, the dimension of the common. The common, which is in a sense uh, uh, lost, uh, this is a, a statement from Anna Arendt that we lo lost the sense of the common in the 50s, she, she wrote that. And it's not surprising that the artists are trying since uh, the 60s to always uh, rebuild new ways of uh, building something in common, either on an anthropological uh, basis, either more on a participative uh, way of making art. And it's the case of Rashid Arin, who is an artist from Karachi, who moved to London in the 60s, and then developed this uh, kind of minimal art practice, but it's very uh, much uh, 
uh, nourished by his activism and especially he was the founder of the Black Phoenix uh, magazine and then uh, the Surtex magazine. He was the author on of a major show in uh, 1989 called the, the Other Story, which was a, a show uh, the first time in England and I think also in the world when we uh, forget uh, also Ma Magicien de la Terre. Uh, the first time where you had only uh, artists from uh, the uh, Asia, India, Africa, or uh, even Latin America. Uh, and uh, this piece is a piece that you can uh, redo yourself because this statement about art is that art is non-hierarchical and non-symmetrical. Uh, Maria Lai is another approach uh, to a sort of uh, w way of making something in common, but more based on her uh, deep link to, to Sardinia. She, she's born in Sardinia and in her city of Ulasai, she has developed a work which is very much linked to uh, the woman activities like making bread or uh, stitching, but uh, she linked it to poetry, uh, text, and also to the idea of making uh, her community united. And in her city of Ulasai, there are many works that deal with this idea. And this performance that you see on these photographs were uh, inspired by a local legend. She uh, uh, was uh, making a link through all inhabitants and the mountain of this city with a blue ribbon. It's not surprising that stitching or works done with fabric are very uh, visible in this pavilion because the thread is also a metaphor of the link. And you have, for example, this work of Limingue, the mending project. Uh, you can bring your uh, clothes with holes and uh, someone will uh, stitch them with a special uh, way and uh, give it back to you uh, with a note from the artist. The idea of the common is sometimes problematic or uh, it's sometimes also about memory of, so of uh, uh, a country. This is the case of this uh, beautiful video of a young artist uh, from uh, Colombia who have tried to reactivate this old tradition of Congo which is to make music with water and uh, this uh, tradition called the tamboleo uh, was kind of forgotten also in the Afro-Colombian uh, context. So it tried to, uh, to reactivate it uh, also in the context of the, 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 the conflict there. Uh, it's, it's a sort of uh, music created with water. The pavilion of the earth uh, is opening with a sort of uh, elegiac work, a uh, very impressive video of Charles Atlas, which, which is a sort of uh, homage to the beauty of nature. You see a sunset going down in 18 minutes, so you have to stay because you might uh, not see a very important moment of this video, which is a sort of totally in contrast with the, the, this beautiful sunset. Uh, there is this famous uh, uh, travestite uh, in America called the Lady Bunny uh, who is speaking on the video and uh, she's uh, actually addressing issues about war and the earth and the uh, over exploitation of the earth and then she will sing a song uh, that uh, you should not miss. Uh, I also wanted to bring together artists who are not so recognized, like, uh, for example, Kananginak Putuguk, he's an Inuit artist, and in, in his last years, before he died, between 2005 and 2010, he realized an, uh, an amazing corpus of drawings in which, actually, he was addressing the issue of the transformation of his environment, and especially the... Uh, coming of white men that he called the Kalunak and also of machines that uh, have uh, totally transformed uh, his world. Um, and for example, this new installation from Tu Van Tran, who is a, an artist who, who was a refugee from Vietnam coming to France and then uh, her work that seems uh, so, you know, 
peaceful, beautiful, is in, in fact dealing with uh, the extraction of the rubber tree in um, Vietnam by uh, the Michelin Society uh, and, and then also about the revolt and the repression of the revolt of the Vietnamese. So that's why this EVA tree is red uh, on the left. The pavilion of tradition is a way to, uh, to sort of uh, not close the discourse of postmodernity, but go over it. Uh, because uh, I think now modernity has become a tradition, uh, even postmodernity in a way. And artists are very free to address the question of tradition, the long-term history, of course, uh, and to uh, rethink uh, new forms uh, of art, either reformulating statements uh, about uh, ancient practices, like the young Chinese Ao Liang, who is very representative of this uh, way of trying to reinvent uh, old traditions, like the the making of painting on a, uh, with ink on silk in China of landscape, or Francis Aprichard, who is inspired uh, either by the Maori culture of New Zealand, either by uh, medieval art or even uh, modernism. And Yesu Kyung, for example, who has collected Korean vases. Uh, from all over in Korea and who is uh, putting them together again, uh, destroyed and remade. The pavilion of the shamans convey artists who are uh, positioning themselves as missionaries. Uh, there is a strong feeling about healing uh, in this pavilion and uh, Ernesto Neto who has invited the Huni Queens uh, from Amazonia, with whom he have developed a work for several years, uh, to be there with him and to uh, to heal. Yesterday we have done a, a first, uh, I would say, ceremony, and uh, this afternoon you should not miss uh, the their boa dance. The boa is the symbol of life for them in the Giardini. Uh, you will find many reference to different kind of culture, Indian culture, also to the Qumran, with the works of Younes Ramun, with the, uh, the tradition of, uh, of the Diablo Martino uh, that Enrico Re uh, Ramirez has uh, displaced in Bolivia with this man who is uh, making a journey in an empty landscape. It's about death, it's about uh, the passage in the other world. And then with the Dionysian pavilion, it's about going out of yourself, as you understand. It's uh, one of the main uh, subjects of this uh, journey. Um, and uh, of course, sexuality is a way of going out of oneself, as well as uh, trance, as dance, as music. So it's present also through the eye of the woman with a very important artist like Huguette Callan who did in the 70s a, a, a groundbreaking wor uh, work in uh, Lebanon, and also with the young uh, Eileen Quinland, who, who is photographing her pregnant body in her shower uh, and making beautiful images out of it. Um, this uh, amazing new piece of Pauline Curnier Jardin in which you enter in the origin of the world of uh, Gustave Courbet, or Jeremy Shaw, who is more interested in created altered uh, level of consciousness. And the pavilion of colors at the end of the Corderia is a kind of uh, moment in which all these issues are put together. For example, Abdoulaye Konate is an artist who is uh, doing this kind of very colored fabric work, but in fact it's very based on an anthropological approach. So he's from uh, Mali and he, for him there is a strong link between uh, Africa and Brazil in which he did this work in Sao Paulo. And so he's addressing the production of the Indigo Blue in Brazil, which is in fact the title of the work. And he's, to him it's there is a strong link also to uh, the, the, the fabrics of his original uh, land. 
the work of uh, Griffa, Giorgio Griffa, the other hand, is very spiritual. It's a man who is making a, this sort of uh, so-called analytical abstraction, but to me, it's uh, based also on his uh, philosophical research, scientific research, and as you can see, he's quoting here a sentence from Agnès Martin uh, about levitation, and you can also feel the rhythm of music in his, in his work. Um, finally, at the Cordery, you encounter these two uh, uh, strong uh, artists, Judith Scott. Uh, Judith Scott is a very special one who, uh, until the end of the 80s, was uh, living in a, a sort of hospital because she, she had the Down syndrome. And then she could, uh, thanks to the Creative Growth Art Center, uh, discover the art practice and, uh, until she died. Uh, during almost uh, 20 years, she, she produced these amazing sculptures which are extremely colorful and full of joy. And uh, I wanted to make also a link with the, the practice of Sheila Hicks, uh, who since the end of the 50s uh, has totally blurred the frontiers between art or crafts and this piece called uh, the Baoli. Uh, is inspired by the Indian tradition of uh, meeting together on a Bauli, which is the place where people talk and uh, meet. The last pavilion uh, of time and infinity that begins at the Arsenale and ends at the Giardino delle Virgine uh, is uh, both conceptual and more meditative. There is this work of Edith de Kent in which uh, performers put together the dust of the space into a rectangle of light, uh, the light moving uh, with a mechanism, so the dust being always re-put in different places during the six months of the exhibition. So it's like a Sisyphean work about the uh, eternal return. Uh, the meeting between two artists, Liu Jianhua, who is uh, an artist from Shanghai, also known uh, since the 90s, with a beautiful work made by porcelain and, uh, and steel. And it's about these sort of drops, uh, precious drops suspended in a, in a sort of uh, suspended moment. And behind the work of Alicia Kvada that deals about different moment of uh, time in space and uh, the feeling of uh, having seen something already, you will see a performance with twins that give you the feeling to have seen uh, the same person just one second before. And this is the, the, the end of the journey with the very um, beautiful, fragile uh, mechanism built by Attila Chorgo uh, that creates the sign of the infinity in the Giardino delle Vergine, in which you will find also uh, projects from uh, Erika Verzuti uh, and many other artists, uh, such as Michael Butler, who has uh, created a shipyard and to not be missed, uh, all these performances that are happening this week. So I just wanted to give you a, a quick uh, update about the program, which is quite dense. Also, if you miss them, you can find them again on, on, the, on, the, web, uh, on the Biennale website. So uh, this afternoon at 3.30, you can... Uh, follow Ernesto Neto and the Uniqueen in the Giardini for this boa dance. Here you see the boa that is in the tent of the Arsenale. Uh, at 5.30, if you are a bit hungry, you can have a, a, a colored meal by uh, Miralda uh, Sels, uh, Xifra and Rabascal in the Arsenale. Tomorrow, uh, you can begin your pass in the Giardini with this uh, artist in levitation, Sharon Extet, as well as with the performance of a very important conceptual Brazilian artist, Paolo Bruschi, who will realize finally this uh, uh, performance after having created it uh, in the 70s. You will see at different moments also Nevin Aladag with this uh, kind of uh, 
Dionysian dance that uh, you can only see but not not uh, understand because the the music is o o only on the headphones of these uh, dancers. Again, Ernesto Neto uh, with a performance this time in the tent uh, of the artist in the Arsenale. Uh, um, a musical and uh, with a singer a performance of Yesu Kyung in the Garibaldi uh, uh, Square. The performance of Jelili Atiku who will bring together the, the feminine energy of uh, 80 participants. He will be uh, going on a horse, so you cannot miss him, uh, from the Giardini delle Vergine to the Corderia. And to end this uh, program, this planetary dance of Anna Halprin, who is uh, now 97 years old and who has created a new version of this uh, dance in the Giardini uh, at the entrance. So I hope to see you there and I thank you very much for all your attention today and wish you a beautiful visit. Uh, we would be happy anyway to answer your question. Thank you very much. Thank you. May I ask <clears throat> Mr. Carlo Giordanetti to join us on behalf of our partners watch, please. Uh, good morning on, uh, on behalf of Swatch. And uh, first of all, uh, I really have to say thank you, uh, Christine, because with this Viva Arte Viva, you have given such a message full of energy and uh, I think that uh, for, for a partner of such a project, uh, energy is probably one of the keywords, together with the vision, for sure, that you, that you are bringing, and this basket, which is full of beautiful images. Um, I have had the chance to uh, walk very quickly through the Arsenale until now and to, and to peruse a little bit, and it's incredible how much uh, positive, uh, beautiful images your mind can absorb. So I think this is going to be really fantastic. Thank you so much. For Swatch um, and uh, being partner of the Biennale for the fourth edition, so it's now almost uh, eight years uh, that we've been together and hopefully even longer. <laughs> uh, it's very important because um, our relationship with contemporary arts goes back actually to the beginning of our brand. We started to uh, to, to use, let's say, this, this small object, which is a watch, to actually carry the work of contemporary artists to the streets. And uh, uh, this has remained uh, as a very important part of our DNA. Uh, we, let's say, we take the opportunity that the Biennale gives us in terms of using some of the incredible spaces that this, this city of Venice offers uh, to tell the story of one project in particular, which we are very proud of. It's called the Swatch Art Peace Hotel. It's based in Shanghai. And it is a residency for artists. It is basically uh, an historical building which has been renovated by us and that hosts uh, 18 different workshops and, uh, and living quarters, of course, uh, for artists from all over the world. In the last uh, uh, five years, when it's been open, we have hosted more than 250. And today at the Arsenal in the Salle d'Army, you see uh, a selection of four uh, that have been between the most recent uh, in residency there, uh, which come from different parts of the world, and I would say embrace the concept of multidisciplinarity or interdisciplinarity that uh, President Barata was mentioning at the beginning. Uh, so this is really for us the way to tell the story of that project, which is, uh, I would say, um, a pure uh, a pure gift. Uh, when you were speaking about generosity, I think it's, it's in this sense. Uh, the Swatch Art Peace Hotel is, is really a gesture of generosity. It was uh, envisioned by our chairman as a way to offer artists a space to express themselves in freedom uh, in a city, uh, of course, which is uh, extremely energetic and in a country like China, which is uh, developing very fast. Collaborations like the one we have with La Biennale are the way uh, to bring this project to the rest of the world and to make it visible. The second president of Swatch will be in Giardini, um, next to the beautiful uh, pavilion of the books, which is, which is certainly uh, an icon of, of this edition. Um, and it is, a, it is a, a work by Ian Davenport, who is a British artist that we have commissioned to, uh, let's say, invest the space that we have uh, with color. 
and uh, who has also been uh, creating, uh, uh, in the tradition of Swatch, the limited edition Swatch Art Special that is the signature of our presence at uh, La Biennale this year. So I also hope to see you uh, around, uh, visiting uh, and enjoying what we have to offer. Thank you very much. Questions? If you raise your hand, somebody will join you with the... There are two there. Where is the microphone? Sono una e due. La, la, la signora prima. Hello there. I have a question for Christine. I'm wondering how and when you first found the work of Kananganak Puruguk and why you wanted to include it in the exhibition. Um, I didn't understand well the first part. How I discovered how and when ah, did you how, find the uh, work? Thanks of to my dear colleague of the Brooklyn Museum. Uh, I was once visiting this uh, beautiful museum, and my attention was uh, caught by a big drawing that is here in the exhibition. Uh, it's a boat in which uh, you see the, the, the Inuit going to uh, uh, chase the whales. And there is one who has a, a photography, uh, 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 an appareil photo. And uh, I was very surprised and striked by this work. And then afterwards I did research uh, about Putuguk and then I understood that he was a major figure of Inuit art. Uh, I, I remember also his daughter, uh, who was at the Documenta uh, some years ago. And uh, uh, when I discovered all the, um, the work he has done, especially in the, race, enfin, the last year of his life, I wanted to, to make, uh, you know, to give him some attention. He's really considered uh, in, in Canada as a major artist, but I think also it's the role of the Bynal to, to do this, uh, to bring this artist here to the larger public. Uh, first of all, thank you all. Uh, we feel very pl privileged to be here. Um, maybe I don't know if this is not the right place to ask this question, but I would like to ask Madame Massel uh, this question. Uh, now, at one hand, uh, there are these crises happening. For instance, Syrian crisis at one part of the world and all those uh, different crises. And here, uh, there are uh, there is this Biennale, all artists with their very powerful statements. And there is a very big power, very transformative. And what do you think, to uh, which, to what extent, uh, this power of art can be translated uh, for the benefit of the disadvantaged groups? What do you think? I, I'm, I don't want to say that like, like being here in this Biennale art by itself is enough uh, for its own purposes, for its sake. But uh, to what extent you think that the power of art can be translated uh, for the benefit of uh, the disadvantaged groups? Uh, I'm not sure to, to be what you mean by disadvantaged group because there can be many types. Uh, I think art is uh, uh, n not uh, the way to uh, to change the world. <laughs> it's not the place uh, to change the world. Uh, otherwise, we would know it. Of course, it would. Uh, it was the core of uh, many utopian works. Uh, I think that art is a place where you can uh, reimagine the world. Uh, but not uh, have uh, uh, the, uh, the, the power to, 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 to heal uh, the, the problems of the, wo the world. Also, of course, there is a big uh, consciousness of the artist about these issues. Like when you see the work of Olafur Eliasson that is uh, uh, inviting uh, migrants people here in Venetia, and I've seen that during many days. They have begun to, to learn uh, 
to speak Italian, they, they have these uh, moments of uh, making these lamps and they help also to get their money for the ONGs. So, of course, it's, it's an action, but it's a micro action. Uh, the most important uh, role of art uh, to me is that it saves you, your, it save your life in general and uh, at least mine. <laughs> and I want to quote an example of an artist who is in, a, in the show, uh, whose name is Petrit Alilaj. He, he was unfortunately raised in a camp in Kosovo when he was young. And uh, he actually uh, did uh, drawings as a child that uh, were very uh, well uh, received by all the members of this camp. And so they decided to, uh, to invite him for, to represent the camp when Kofi Annan came in the camp. And uh, they asked him to give a, a drawing to Kofi Annan. Uh, and for him, it was a moment in which he understood that uh, that art also was more, uh, that was something that can express something deep also about uh, minorities. Thank you. Um, over there. Lassu. Ah, no, c'è lì, prego. Proprio, mi sentite? Sì. Sì. Proprio a questo proposito volevo chiedere al Presidente il valore eh, di questa attenzione che in alcuni artisti si è riscontrata in questa biennale, non solo ne, nella mostra della curatrice ma per esempio nell'artista del padiglione americano, ehm, di mh, fornire delle piccole soluzioni che non sono soluzioni ma sono delle finestre aperte sul problema appunto dei migranti e di come l'arte in questo modo si impegni eh, chiaramente non a trovare soluzioni ma a trovare delle vie artistiche per eh, trovare un'integrazione mm, Biennale can do two things Either what was done in 1973 or 4, to close the exhibition and to dedicate our time to a specific problem, a political problem that at the time was Chile, and uh, cancel everything around us, but to highlight only one single issue that was freedom, freedom in one country. So, and that is a way in which uh, a specific situation can be considered of such an importance even to, to get the exhibition closed. Uh, if we keep the exhibition open and we, if we uh, do it in this sort of very peculiar way, proclaiming the life that art brings to us, is uh, because we believe that the Binale can have a second uh, can be helpful in a, in a second way. And uh, the, the way in, in which, uh, through which artists can help us. I mean, the world is here, is in our head. The Syrian problem is here. The, the whatever situation, the, 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 the problem of people uh, going from one country to another, migrating, non unwillingly migrating becomes a problem which is here in our head. And if there is a crisis in these times, it's a crisis of our consciousness of what is all going around and what, the way we react to it. As I said, it's, we decided not to represent and indulge in give, having artists representing situations and dramatizing situations because the drama is already here, is already among us. It's our capability to face this situation, the capability to understand them, and the capability not to fall into the trap of oversimplification and of given words and, give, and, uh, um, and, and reduce everything to uh, very uh, simple acts or words. Anywhere, where any sentence is uh, not the end of a reasoning, of the end of a, the ragionamento, but it's a, the, the, a sentence which is a spit in your face. Uh, the, uh, 
so the, we, uh, we ask artists to help us in terms of rejoining ourse ourselves with ourselves, in reconciling uh, our brain, our feelings, our sentiments with uh, the difficult task of being human being in this very moment. But being human being in this very moment means accepting the complexity of the world, accepting the complexity of human conditions, and dealing with it in, a very, in an active work, way, uh, with courage, uh, considering that we cannot be reduced to one-dimensional men, but there are many dimensions in us, and there are many in us, and there are many Syrians in our head, and there are many Muslims in, each, in any of us, and there are many of us in the head of Muslims. We, we, either, either we believe in that we can reconcile ourselves with the greatness of human mind and the greatness of the, and, and the capability of human beings to reconcile themselves with reality, with a complex reality, or we are, we'll be going on complaining about an age of anxiety followed by an age of anger, an age of anger followed by an age of wars, an age of wars followed by an age of oversimplification of everything, which will be in a, a accepting that uh, we have to uh, wear our masks and be masked, whereas art helps us to take the mask off uh, every day. And uh, the world of artists is to help us to uh, to, the, to, go, to, to uh, refuse the mystification that we might find necessary every day for surviving. I don't hear you because you don't have the microphone. So you have to please accept that. Thank you. Um, is it, uh, if we have not to simplify, is it to avoid the question? If we avoid the question, we are not going to simplify. So no. we should avoid all the questions, so, so we make like there, there is no questions? No, uh, just the opposite. I was, I was saying that what the tendency today is to, to make confusion between simplification and oversimplification. And every day we are facing uh, uh, an attempt to oversimplify the world. Good, bad, you, me, and and with this I, cultural identity, and all these uh, uh, instruments that are instruments for closing uh, ourselves in in ourselves and uh, reduce the and uh, uh, cancelling the very fact that the world, is, the modern world in particular, but the world in general, is a complex thing that we have to understand, fully understand, uh, not oversimplifying, not thinking that complexity can be canceled from the world. And populism is the, uh, exactly the, 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 the way in which a way in which the uh, complexity is uh, nullified. Uh, everything is reduced to the very few truths and very few words. And we are asked to shrink ourselves into uh, symbols. Uh, this is, the, 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 we are worried about this sort of reducing every, ourselves to symbols to be defended and not vital energies to be applied. Questo è tutto. Ah no, c'è una mano là. Una mano là, lassù, 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 lassù. Prego. Thank you. Um, my question is to Mrs. Crater, uh, Christine. Uh, what do you see uh, in today's art scene when we remember uh, the relation of interrelation between politics and art? Uh, there are lots of movements, individual and anonymous movements, uh, based on 
social change based on radical changes. They are using the language or the capability of art. Uh, do you give any chance to them? Do you believe them? Thank you. I think I, I responded to your question already uh, with the other question before. Of course, I do. But uh, I cannot reduce art uh, uh, to only the political sphere. It's only a part of it. Thank you. Uh, I'm curious about the concept of autism. Uh, Christian uh, propose. Uh, how about the experience of autumn of yourself as a director of this Biennale? During my uh, next vacation, it will be my uh, main activity, uh, I tell you. <laughs> um, no, but globally, I think uh, if you want to uh, to uh, work uh, with art, uh, you need to uh, also nourish yourself as a curator. Uh, so to spend uh, a lot of time uh, doing nothing is also a part of my schedule, I can tell you. So reading and doing nothing, yes, sure. That's my plan right now, actually, so I, I, I won't respond to any more questions. And digesting. <laughs> yes, um, uh, hi, um, I'm Sasha no, I'm serious. <laughs> Um, why did you choose uh, Edi Rama for the exhibition? For some, he's uh, quite a controversial politician. And uh, one more question, uh, how did you come across uh, group OHO? Shall I answer? Or because, uh, I said, uh, this is for uh, Christine. This was a real statement yeah. uh, about Otsuma. Uh, no, Edi Rama, I know for many years he was uh, in Paris as an artist uh, before being a politician in the 90s. Uh, and uh, then he was asked, uh, because he was both an artist, also a basketballer, to come back to Albania and be a ministry uh, of culture and sport and so on. So for me, I uh, actually know more the artistic Edi Rama than the mayor of Tirana. Uh, first thing, and uh, so his way of being a politician is very special. I mean, I've been to Tirana, I know the way he has rethought his uh, building for the, as a prime minister, as a sort of mini art center. Uh, he's himself trying to keep his art activity by doing doodles, and that's the work that we have here. Doodles is also about uh, a kind of way of being with yourself. Uh, it can be considered uh, as a sort of Zen practice in a way. Um, and Oho, I know so for many years I've been a lot to ex-Eastern uh, Europe and uh, I've always been very interested in this group, especially uh, in uh, the performances of uh, Bogaknik and David Nez, which actually I chased and I finally found the video uh, of a uh, summer project from the 71 after many years of uh, research in a collection in uh, Croatia. Yeah, this is a question for uh, Paolo Baratta. Yes. You said uh, we have to reconcile ourselves with the complex reality. I would like to ask you how do we reconcile ourselves? Does it mean that we have to just let go of what is, uh, uh, what is of the dangers in the world, or do we have to, to do something about it? Reconciliation doesn't mean accepting whatever happens. Reconciliation with oneself means reconciling with the 
with, with the right starting point, which is the point of observation where complexity is to be considered, because without that complexity, the, the consciousness of the complexity of things, you are not capable of organizing courageous actions. Because the, the complexity requires courage. The complexity requires choices. The complexity requires acts that are part of the vita activa of men. Uh, this is the, the, the only way in which, uh, I mean, the, uh, the human being can face the complexity of life. But if you start, uh, if you start from denying the complexity, you might fall immediately in a state of frustration, and the state of frustration is the state of, of quietness and the state of accepting whatever happens. So it's uh, uh, oversimplification brings you to incapability and to uh, standstill. This is at least what I, and with me some philosophers or writers in the last 300 years have been thinking about. Uh, so I'm, not, I'm just a modest follower. follower. Uh, anybody else? Nobody else. So let me say well, just one, one, one thing more before applauding. One thing more is that we have, I forgot to tell you before, we have still this year, the, with the collaboration of the Victoria and Albert Museum, we have the pavilion for, of, of, uh, of applied arts dedicated to display. Uh, and in, uh, in, in, in Marghera, we have a pavilion with uh, a, a French artist, which is there and waiting for you if you m might be interested in having a walk down in the terra ferma. And uh, all the rest has already more or less been said. And all I can say now, uh, it, it is not still the beginning of Otium, but it's the beginning of lunch, which for, <laughs> for, for, for Marcel is the equivalent of Otium. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye.